Hello everybody, this is Pastor Jeff. I am logging on a few seconds early to get everything up and running and uh, see if we can get this thing going today. If anyone sees me, could you... There we go. I'm going to share that real quick. That didn't work. Come on. There we go. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? This is Pastor Jeff, and uh, I'm just working through a, learning some things uh, about technicalities. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, everyone's doing well today. And I'm looking forward to ministering uh, the word of the Lord to you. Very excited uh, today about what's going on. So uh, somehow I see there's some text coming up. I'm not going to worry about that. But anyways, uh, hey, how y'all doing today? Uh, I'm right here in my dining room. I was going to go to the church today, and uh, you know it's just not really safe to go out. So I'm I'm staying at home and uh, doing what uh, everyone is asking us to do, so hopefully uh, that'll all be okay. Uh, I want to participate and uh, cooperate. I think it's the right thing to do during these trying times, and I trust everybody's healthy, got plenty of groceries and uh, all the stuff that you need. Uh, when I was uh, getting ready to uh, get things together for uh, my Bible study today or preaching, whatever you want to call this, I uh, I thought, well, I'm going to do my best to preach straight from the Word of the Lord and not say or do anything that relates to uh, the coronavirus or current events, fear, and all of that. And when I was praying and doing devotion, I... Uh, you know, I started, uh, my wife and I started a church in Davidson, Michigan. I think it's been nine years now, uh, nine years ago. And uh, so I've preached a lot of sermons in the last nine years. I, I save every sermon I ever preached. I have them in Word documents. I also traveled for a number of years uh, as a full-time evangelist before we started the church. So when I was going through some of my documents today, just the ones that are stored on my computer, I had... 1,505 sermons that I've preached uh, over the years. Uh, I'd kind of like to make a little book out of those someday. And I don't know if anyone would be interested in that, but I just thought it'd be kind of neat to uh, like put them in a little book and maybe let other people get sermon thoughts out of it. That, that's a story for another day. But I thought, well, I'm going to start just going through these sermons one at a time, and I'm going to open them up. And I'm going to see if something in there does not correlate to what's going on in the world. <laughs> I gave up. I'll be honest with you, because there's no message from Genesis to Revelation right now, in my opinion, that can be preached, that someone's not going to take that and apply it to your current circumstance. And I felt like the Lord revealed that to me, and I think it's vitally important to know that no matter what comes out of this today, no matter what scripture I use, uh, it's quick, it's, it's alive, it's powerful, the Word of God is, and it's, uh, the spoken word is extremely powerful. And so whatever I choose to speak, or I've, obviously I have my sermon ready, but what, whatever I choose to preach about today, uh, it is going to affect you. It, it's, it's a natural thing, it's a normal thing. So rather than try to avoid that and uh, deliberately try not to do it, I'm just going to go with the flow today. And uh, I think this is Palm Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Got Easter coming up, uh, pretty sure. But next weekend, I'm going to be doing a little, um, I'll be doing a service uh, and be taking communion. Uh, you would be welcome to do that with me at home. 
It's very easy to do. You know, you can make your own communion bread with flour and water, no salt. Uh, it's very, very simple to make. And you can use wine or grape juice or whatever your choice is. I don't judge that uh, whatsoever. And, and that's a subject I'm not going to get on today as well. So I'm going to read from the book of Mark, chapter number 4, verse number 35. Uh, first of all, around the house, this is just so odd. Uh, you know, my wife and I have been shut in here for several weeks. And uh, it's just you know, the grandkids are gone. Kids are not here. It's so quiet around here. It's it's just like messing me up just a little bit. And uh, uh, but uh, we have a lot of groceries. For some reason, at the age of 65, I just I just discovered ramen noodles. Uh, I've always loved Asian food, and now for some reason I can't quit eating ramen. So. Uh, it is what it is, but I put shrimp in it and and uh, ahi tuna and just do freaky stuff. So that's just me. Let's read from the word of the Lord today. Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. The Bible says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, I can tell you what manner of man that is. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. The Bible says that the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. And we beheld Him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, what a marvelous revelation to know who Christ is, uh, to know that Jesus is uh, God manifest in flesh. Uh, I'm not going to preach on Godhead today, by the way, because people get too... Uh, freaky about that and upset. That's fine. Some people don't like storm. My my oldest daughter, she uh, she likes storm for some reason, and uh, she loves the lightning and the hard rain and the the wind and she just always has liked that. Uh, I'm not a big storm guy to be honest with you. And uh, anyone that knows my story knows that uh, when the tornado hit in Nashville a few weeks ago that I was actually there uh, the night of the tornado. I was at a conference. I was staying with uh, uh, some family, and the tornado actually came right over the top of us where we were. It had already hit uh, around downtown Nashville, and then it came right towards and over us, and uh, luckily it wasn't on the ground when it came over. Uh, it was like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, we were all in the basement. It, it was a, a kind of a, a, a time to rattly because uh, it was just, you know, we were watching the news at the same time. We could see the thing coming over us. And uh, by the mercy and grace of the Lord, the tornado didn't touch down until it got one mile past the house that I was staying in. And it did a lot of devastation. There were lives lost. Very, very sad thing. So... Uh, that's one storm that I survived by the grace of God. Uh, so when a storm comes through, a lot of it has to do with where you are when the storm happens. Uh, I don't want to be in a boat, and I've had that happen before uh, down on Lake Erie one time. Uh, I've uh, been in a storm in an airplane. Uh, that was not one of my favorite airplane rides as well. Uh, fear of storms, I think it's called... Uh, agoraphobia, something like that, and it, it's, a, uh, it's a, uh, a, a panic thing that happens to people, and they can't help it. Uh, I know people that literally crawl under the bed. I've been to some people's houses, and when lightning flashes, the dogs go run and get in the closet and hide under the bed. It's, it's a real thing. Uh, people can shake, cry, all kinds of things happen, uh, you know, and it's very uh, paralytic. Uh, it, it, it paralyzes people because of fear. Uh, that fear comes from the fact that when we're going through that, we feel like that we are not in control. Uh, 
Uh, I want to talk about that for a minute today. Um, first of all, you have never been in control, and you never will. Uh, I'll probably get an amen or two on that. I'm glad today that I'm not the one that holds the reins of the universe in my hand. I know I'm not the one who holds the reins of the universe in my hand. So won't you just let that go and let God, who does have it, do what he does best, and that is be in control of everything. Uh, a lot of the cliches and one-liners I use, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'm comical and uh, whatever, uh, I, I don't mean that just because I want people to laugh, but I, I just want to say this today. If God's not my co-pilot, I see those bumper stickers, and I'm like, dude, you need to just let him drive. Uh, uh, let him take the wheel. Well, that would be a good name for a song, Jesus Take the Wheel. I think I come up with something there. Uh, uh, it's very magnified, like I said, according to where you're at. There are two kinds of storms. Uh, in my opinion, in the world. One is the natural storm that is a uh, obviously uh, caused by weather, and then there's what we call life storms. Uh, just in the last few months, I, as a pastor, I have had to help people, deal with people who uh, have been through some storms. Uh, some of the storms came out of nowhere. Some of them were self-inflicted. Uh, some of them were just you know, wrong place, wrong time, uh, and, you know, I, I don't judge any of that, but I do want to say this. Uh, Jesus had his personal storms as well. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane and the cross, and you say, well, Pastor, you know, he, he was God. Why, why would that bother him? Well, if it didn't bother him, why do you say, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me? Uh, the pain, uh, the thought, because uh, he was as human as we are, uh, of, of dying, a very natural thing. The Bible said he prayed until the sweat became as great drops of blood. And I thank him for that blood today. Uh, when I pray, I plead the blood of Jesus on everything. Call me a freak if you want to. Uh, you know, there may be some skeptics and some atheists and some agnostics out there that are watching and say, well, that's just stupid. Say whatever you want. You know, do whatever you want. I don't care. I plead the blood of Jesus on my home, my family, and the people that I pastor, because I totally believe in that. Without that blood, we are all in a lot of trouble. That blood symbolically is on my doorpost right now, and when the angel of death passes over, it can't hurt us because we are aware of the redeeming, saving power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples had experienced several mountaintop uh, situations up to this point. But when the storm took over on the Sea of Galilee, fear entered into their hearts. Roaring waves, the boat rocking, uh, uh, you know, uh, they actually kind of, uh, uh, when this happens, uh, they fail to recall the lessons they had learned about the power and the purpose of their leader. Uh, it's amazing how quick some of us forget of where God has brought us from and how awesome God has been. Uh, think about that for just a second. Let, let that marinate a little bit. One day I'm excited and I'm pumped up and I'm ready to save the world and some little thing comes into my life and all of a sudden I am, you know, down in the dumps. Uh, There's some people that are like that. Uh, uh, we call them kite boys. <laughs> they're, they're either hired a kite or they're lowering a the dog. There's no uh, in-between on that. And so sometimes when trouble strikes, we forget and we fail to recall past prayers, uh, specific guidance that God has already provided us with in other situations. Those are times that we need to draw from our past and and know that God has never failed me yet. God's never going to fail me. He's never failed anybody, by the way. And so what happened after the storm? Jesus rebuked them and uh, tried to teach them a little bit about humility. And I want to talk about humility for a second. With everything that's going on right now, 
uh, you know, Facebook is blown up, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, you, you name it. Uh, internet, you know, everybody's home. Uh, Netflix is blown up, all of that. What amazes me of all the, is all the stuff I see in such a time of crisis that a lot of people have still not been humbled. I, I don't understand that. Uh, I'm a proud person by nature. I'm the I'll be the first one to tell you, but I, I'm humbled by this. Uh, I'm aware, you know. I see people putting up posts, and I'm not going to fight with you later. That ain't going to happen. You know, said don't let the media scare you. They're overplaying this thing. I'm going to look at you as a pastor and tell you you ought to be afraid in this point, at at this point, and and that is. Uh, I'm not afraid of the media, but you need to take this virus thing very serious. It is a serious thing, but people want to make that political. You know, they want to attack the president. They want to blame somebody. That's just just human nature. They're trying to control something that had they have zero control over in the first place. Jesus was basically saying, as long as I'm in the boat with you, everything is going to be okay. I hope somebody understand what pastor is trying to tell you today as long as he's in your boat everything is going to be okay john 6 and 1 watch the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew so when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs they see jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship they were afraid but he saith unto them it is i be not afraid then they willingly received him into the ship and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Figure that out. I'm in the middle of a lake. I'm in the middle of a storm. And when Jesus gets in the boat, or I accept him in the boat, I've already made it to the other side. So let me say this. Let Jesus into your ship today because it's guaranteed passage. You won't be quarantined at the dock in Miami. <laughs> you won't be stuck somewhere uh, in the sea of forgetfulness. Let Christ into your ship today, and I promise you, you will have safe passage to whatever shore you're headed towards. I think that's really good stuff, not because I'm saying it, but because it's the truth. You never know how Jesus is going to handle your situation. Sometimes he takes it away. Sometimes he just says, Peace be still. How powerful is that? Sometimes he shows up in the nick of time and gets us to our destination quickly. In the uh, culture I grew up in, they used to sing this song, He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. How many have ever heard that? Yes, he is. It says, <laughs> you may, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. He's a non-time God. And I'm like, dude, can he show up early every once in a while? <laughs> Anybody ever felt like that? Uh, yeah, I know he's on time, but why not just come early and put me out of my misery? Well, that's just not always how God operates. I want to say this today. i got to keep track of my time, even though i got nothing to do. Uh, are you all still with me today? Every storm in life has a purpose. Everything that you go through has a purpose. The Bible says that very plainly in the book of Ecclesiastes. To, to everything, there's a purpose and a season under the sun. There's a purpose for all of that. Uh, our problem is, is we're so worried about the purpose or why that we fail to recognize that God's with us during that time. When we rely on our own strength, we lack sufficient resources and ability to meet the challenges of life. That's when we need God to provide what we need. Uh, he knows who you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows everything you're going through that. And more than that, he's orchestrating our circumstance for his glory and our benefit according to the nature of his goodwill. I feel in my spirit today to say this. Along with all the chaos, along with all the the, the panic, uh, you know, you couldn't drag me to the grocery store right now. I don't, I don't want to go to the grocery store. Uh, 
I don't, I don't want to put myself out there in that. Uh, my wife's been trying to buy groceries for a couple days. She can't find them. People won't deliver them, and they won't give her a checkout time at the stores. Uh, if you know a way around that, call my wife and help her out. Uh, but it's just not working. But we're fine. But I just want you to know that nobody has to bring us groceries. Uh, I have checked, and I have not lost one pound <laughs> since my surgery on Friday the 13th. So God taking care of old J.D., so, uh, maybe in your life the lightning's flashing right now, the winds are blowing, you're shaking in your shoes, you don't know what you can, what you're going to do, and, and, and all you can think about doing is hiding because there's the element of fear. Listen to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Bam, as Emerald would say. God has got this thing. He says, I'll give you a way out of this. Put your trust in me. How powerful is that today? Uh, the disciples probably kind of wondered, uh, how long is the storm going to last? And uh, how are we going to make it to shore? And they probably wished it would have never happened. But had they avoided the storm, they, they would have missed the demonstration. I said, if they avoided the storm, they would have missed the demonstration. So you think God's just going to come in your calmest moment and... and uh, reveal all of these powerful revelations to you right when you're doing your best? No. Uh, God's greatest demonstrations are when we are at our very weakest point. When we realize I am not self-sufficient, I cannot make it on my own, I am nothing without the love of Christ in my life, I, I can't do it. That's that's humanism. I, I got news for you. That's going to fail. You'll fail yourself, and other people will fail you. But God will never fail you. The frightening situation was transformed into a revelation of the Savior's divine nature because God wants to make his power known through your trials as well. I have no doubt. In a few months, however long it takes, I, I, I'm not even going to, Take a guess at that because I am not the one that's in control. Many of us are going to look back at this and we're going to be coming out of this with testimony after testimony of all the things that God did for us during these trying times. Psalms 107 says, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves therefore be still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience, but he shouts in our pain. It is his megabone to, to, to rouse a deaf world. A lot of people say, well, do you think God did this? Well, well everybody's saying some foreign country did, blah, blah. Uh, let me say it again. I'm sick of it. I don't care. That, that, that's not the point to me. That, you know, maybe people could just quit blaming and let's start helping one another as, as Christians and be who God has called us to be. But I do want to say this. God will use the things in our life that are chaos to us to help make us better people. When, when we become humble and we realize, you know what? I thought I, thought I had it all going. Uh, you know, I've got all these things running through my mind. We just bought a building. <laughs> we just bought a beautiful building in Davidson, five acres, you, you know, of property. And, uh, and I'm unable to have service. And the enemy wants to say, oh, now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
I got a, I got a word for the enemy today. I'm going to do what I've always done. I'm going to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Only what you do for Christ will last. I'm going to trust God, serve God, believe God, speak a word of faith that he's going to meet my wife and I's needs, uh, all of our financial obligations, uh, Point of Grace Church in Davison. God's got this thing. I, I, first of all, I want you all to know who's, whoever's watching. Uh, Pastor Jeff and Sister Carla love you guys so much. We miss you so bad. I, I want to see everybody. Uh, we may have a hug festival uh, when this is over. Uh, you know, I miss going out to eat with my friends on Sundays, and I, I miss all of that. But during these quiet times, is a great opportunity for us to maybe take advantage of some things that we don't normally have. Uh, before I uh, close today, I I'm going to speak a blessing on some people. I want to speak a word of faith into your life. Those of you who are laid off have had to file for unemployment. Do you know, don't let that get the best of you. We are going to climb out of this. I know the economy's in trouble, and uh, there are people, uh, you know, who are very, very sick, and people who we have lost. Uh, but maintain your faith that God didn't uh, uh, bring you to where you're at right now for you to go down the tube. God didn't do that. Uh, the Bible says, "The Lord God tempteth not man with evil." Uh, what God does is He just blesses people. And that, that's such an amazing thing. Uh, before I close today, I'll say a prayer here in a minute. But um, if you are watching this video or didn't get to watch it, uh, I detected that sometimes after a video is recorded, there's what's called latency, which means that there's a, a space of time between when my mouth moves and the word comes out. I've talked to several friends guys who have better equipment than me, and it does it on their channels as well. Uh, it's not a, I've got great internet, you know, at the house. I've got a really nice uh, live stream camera that, that we bought for, uh, for this purpose. Uh, so if you want to watch the sermons in their entirety, you can go to the church's YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in Point of Grace Davison, and a hard copy uh, will be on that channel within an hour and there will be no latency, so it doesn't look like a bad kung fu movie. Uh, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be okay for you to watch. We'd like to ask you to please uh, stay in touch and contact. I've been getting text uh, messages. I, I get a lot of stuff on my messenger, and I don't want to hurt people's feelings, but very seldom, if ever, do I ever open up an attachment. You know, uh, most of the stuff people send me is, is uh, fear-based, and they're trying to scare everybody half to death. I just don't open them. If you see that I didn't look at it, don't be offended, but uh, but don't send it to me. I, you know, I, I said that. I, I don't need that right now in my life. I only want positive things. I'm not sticking my head in the sand, but I, I'm not. The Bible says to, to think on good things. Whatever things are good, pure, wholesome. Think about those things. Stay away from the negativity. Uh, don't believe all the reports that you hear. Validate things. I thought about putting out a challenge that don't post anything on social media that you can't validate with a footnote or proof of the source of where you got it, because that's bothering me too. Oh, Clint Eastwood said, you know, just because Clint Eastwood pictures on something doesn't mean he said it. There is one Clint Eastwood thing that I know is true that Clint Eastwood said when they asked him about his philosophy on life and, uh, this is what he said. I think it's awesome. He said, I think everybody should just leave everybody else alone. <laughs> How much would that solve? Uh, so, anyways, preaching about Clint Eastwood ain't this great. I'll probably get some flack about that, but it's all good. Uh, go ahead and make my day. Uh, I want you to know I love you folks so much. My wife and I love you. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Uh, I'll probably be back on a couple of times uh, for a little word of encouragement. Uh, during the week. Point of Grace, thank you for staying faithful. Uh, thank you for giving electronically. 810-216-5577. Uh, you can text your offerings and gifts to the church. What a, a great blessing that's been. Thank you. Uh, the church is still there. We're still paying the bills. Uh, we're not going down the tube. Uh, everything's going to be okay. Right now, Father, by the power of your Spirit, anybody who is watching this show, I speak a special blessing over them. 
through the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost, the gift that you have given me. I speak a word of faith by authority that you have given me to bless these people with a spoken word. I know that you're going to provide for everybody that I pastor. Anybody who watches this video today, I ask you to give them a special blessing. If they're hard, having a hard time finding anything, uh, groceries or whatever, lead them to it. I know, I know you're interested in anything that's lost. God bless them financially, but most of all, uh, health-wise, God protect us. Dispatch the angels at the four corners of our property. Uh, warrior angels, divine protection angels, put them out there, God, so they can protect us and our family. God, help us to stay safe, stay safe and help us to be a blessing to mankind. I believe that's your will today. I love all of you. Thank you so much for watching today. And uh, we will see you very soon. God bless you. And y'all have a marvelous day.